Hello, I'm Sean. And I'm Ronan McCarthy, and we're here to interview you. And my name is Niall Muldoon, and I'm the Ombudsman for Children. I'm delighted to be here. So, Niall, what do you think about lowering the age limit to 16 for voting? Okay, that's something I think it's uh, it's been mentioned an awful lot by young people, and it's it's happened in Scotland very successfully, where they they allow it for local elections in Scotland, and I think for the European elections, but not for the general elections. So I think it's something that we the government have promised to look at. Um, from my point of view, I think it'd be really useful to be able to get young people's voting and get their opinions to the politicians and get the politicians paying attention. Because if you get all the 16 and 17 year olds voting, politicians will have to go looking to do something for you in order to get your vote. So I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, but how do you get, how do I put it, idiot 16 year olds from voting? How do you get? Idiot 16 year olds not to vote. So you want the poor, the idiot 16 year olds not to vote. I don't think you can because you, we haven't been able to stop any adults from voting. So why would we stop 16 year olds from voting? The, I'm afraid that's the drawback with democracy is that everybody gets the equal chance to vote. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you think there, there would be a few out there, do you? Yeah. Yeah. One a few. But again, there'd be a lot of very bright, intelligent, well thought out young people who'd be able to vote for the first time. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. For a point. Yeah, it'd be merely worth it. Hopefully they'd outnumber it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> You're not sure. Okay. What would you like to accomplish um, a year from now, personally? Wow. Okay. Personally, um, I would like to. I'd like to see better cooperation between different agencies that work for children, and remind more and more of the agencies that they work for children, not for themselves. Um, and I think if that happens in the next twelve months, then children will get a much better service from all of those agencies. That would be fantastic. I'd also like to see um, better mental health services for children improving in the next 12 months. Um, that will be fantastic. And then I'd like to lose two kilograms personally in the next 12 months. How do you feel about how children can help the climate crisis at this stage? I think children have done an enormously good job already in helping the climate crisis. Um, before COVID, there was a lot of... Uh, Every Friday there was the there was protests by children around the world that put a huge amount of pressure on politicians and that made a big difference. And I think now they just keep doing it in their own schools, they do it in their own families, they make a difference there. But I also think they around the world young people are really making a noise that children uh, that politicians can't um, ignore anymore. So I think they're making a huge difference that way. So from individually do stuff at home and then. Collectively, they can do stuff in the school and then make, go online and, and push the, the politicians as well. Yes, but how can we try and prevent adults or even politicians from just not ignoring us and saying that we're just kids, we don't know what we're talking about? I think that's always a battle, but it's something, again, we've got to get the young people's voices in there and people like myself and people like Tuslin, the people that are supporting this event and others can start to do that more. And I think politicians are starting to realize that they have to listen to young people because you have a lot of the solutions and you will also be the people who will have to live in the world um, that's changing. So I think there is more chance for you to be heard now than there ever was before. Do you think more people will be aware in the future of what's happening with um, and know that children should have a right? To Do you think more people will be aware heard. of of children's rights in the future? Yeah, I think there's more and more people becoming aware of it. I think there's a lot more. The adults who are becoming parents now would have grown up knowing about children's rights. Their their parents may not have. So if you're a thirty year old person now, you know about children's rights, and if you have a child, you will fight for those rights very strongly. It's the same that anyone that's twenty to thirty years of age knows about children's rights now, and they become the teachers, they become the nurses, the doctors the lawyers, the judges. So they know about children's rights. So I think there's a huge improvement. And you're growing up now, so five or 10 years from now, you will be pushing for children's rights and advocating for children's voices to be heard. So I think there's a big change happening. Do you feel that older adults should have less to do with the climate crisis since they won't be growing 
since they won't be having to deal with it in 20 years' time? I don't think so. I, I think it's unfair to stop the, anybody from, from helping with climate crisis. I think there's lots of 60 and 70-year-olds who really want to make a difference in climate crisis. They really understand it and they want to make a difference for their children and their grandchildren. So I think you would take everybody that wants to help should be allowed to help no matter what their age are. Yes, but I've heard a lot of times that like a lot of old people just say, oh, we won't have to deal with it. We're too old now that the chil- it's the children's job to fix it now. But do you, But that's if you ignore their voice, then that's exactly what they're doing to you. You, you're worried that they, the old people ignore your voice. You can't be ignoring their voice. Some of them might say that, but a lot of them are are saying, "No, I'm going to change here. I'm going to." They're the ones that are buying electric cars. They're the ones that are changing their their houses. They're the ones that are upgrading for environmentally friendly opportunities. So I think it's we can't say every old person is like that. Actually, my point was that how do we try and change their minds on like just ignore is thinking that it's the next generations. How do we try and get them active as well as us? Okay, so you want to bring them on board. I think it's just, again, it's about persuading them where they are at. So I don't know what, I suppose maybe it's the, where do they listen to? Who do they listen to? Do you get young people's voices to where the, the programs that they're watching, the radio stations they're listening to, the shows that they're involved with, those sorts of things. So I think it's just, it might take a bit of work to do that, but it can be done. It'd be worth it. Do you think there's a better way to get people to join your cause? Is there a better way to get people to join the children's cause? How to advertise it? There probably is. There's always a better way. Um, I'm not sure what that is at this moment in time, but I think one of the things that I, I would love to see happening is that children's rights are a standard part of what happens in school all the time. Some schools talk about children's rights all the time. So that from the time you're four years of age and you go into school, you know about your rights and you know about children's rights and teachers will help you. Other schools don't do anything with it. So I think for me, that's probably the best way we could do it is if we get into every school that it's talked about, it's spoken about, and it's lived by the teachers and the young people. How would you help, like from all my own personal experience, there is a lot of homophobic behaviors, racism and sexism in my school personally. How would you try and get young people to convince them that that you shouldn't be like that? I think it's important. Again, I think this this week is very important because this is stand up week for for LGBTQ children and young people within schools. There's a stand up awareness week, so it's about the whole school and the teachers and the adults and all the children knowing that we're supportive of all diversity in the school, diversity in sexuality, diversity in gender, diversity in nationality, races culture, religion, that's what schools should be about. They should be all inclusive. And I think that's one week is, is a great start, but you have to live inclusivity in the school. So it's about the, the principal and the teachers creating a culture of inclusion. And I think that's something that will make a big difference. And if there is a problem with it, if you see people being bullied, it needs to be reported as soon as possible. I agree. But in a lot of places, including my school, some of the teachers would just walk in and like send like a little thing to like a little questionnaire on teens to the children and then about homophobic nature and stuff and then just get them to say yes to everything and okay so you think it's that it's they're they're doing stuff but it's not real it's not it's not making a difference yeah Okay, well, I think it's just it's a, maybe that's a, something that needs to be pointed out maybe to the students' council. Maybe say, listen, you're doing this, but it's not making a difference. We need to change what we're doing. So again, it's about getting the voice of the students towards the the power, and the power is with the the teachers. They call the vice principal and the principal, and say, listen, this this survey is good, but it's not good enough. We're not getting enough out of it. We need to change change it in some way. Thank you for doing this interview with us and answering the questions. Thank you. You were both brilliant. That was that was one of the toughest interviews I've ever had. So well, well done. Thank you very, very much. And good luck with this. Hope you enjoy it. You have a future in it. <laughs>